Hey guys, in this video, I wanted to show you how to make a digital card display with a Raspberry Pi and a 5 inch LCD screen. So I have some Pokemon cards that I like to display on my desk or shelf. And I thought it would be kind of neat if I could have like a screen of some sort that would cycle through some of my favorite cards. I have one set up to show some vintage Magic the Gathering cards like some of these Power 9 cards. And I also have another one set up to display some legendary cards from Hearthstone. So before I started with this project, the very first thing that came to mind when I wanted to make a card display, of course, was either using one of those picture frames or an old tablet. Unfortunately, I had neither of those, but I did have some Raspberry Pis and a couple of LCD screens that I wasn't using. So just let me warn you that this process is pretty involved and requires a lot of typing of commands. So if that isn't your thing, just go out and buy a digital picture frame. It'll be a lot easier. However, if you like tinkering with Raspberry Pis, then this project might be something you'd enjoy. First, you'll need a Raspberry Pi. I'm using a Raspberry Pi 3, and that's what I'd recommend since it has built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Uh, then you'll need one of these LCD displays. This one is by Waveshare. I like this one since it just plugs up to the GPIO pins for power, and then you can use a really small HDMI header to connect it to the Raspberry Pi. The resolution is also decent for its size at 800 by 480. At that resolution, as you can see, the text is still crisp and readable, and it also features a touch screen as a bonus. So 5 inches is also perfect since it's almost the same size as a real trading card. So you can get a bigger LCD, but make sure that you get one that has higher resolution. And also your images, your card images, will also have to be uh, of higher quality or else it will look pixelated. So for this project, I'll go over everything I did to complete it. Here you'll see this Raspberry Pi I have attached to just half the case. This is to protect it from uh, shorting it. And all we really have to do here is plug it up to the GPIO pins. So you want to line it up to the uh, pins here so it's uh, furthest to the right. And this should also line up the edge of the screen with uh, the USB ports. And the back part of the Raspberry Pi will be protected by this half case. Finally, you want to attach the HDMI headers and it just plugs in like this and kind of holds everything together. It's a pretty solid uh, uh, unit now with it all attached up. Uh, you can design a case for it and everything, but for the purpose of this video, I'll just show you it in its bare format. I will design some sort of bezel as well for this uh, device to make it look a little nicer. But uh, overall, that's all you pretty much have to do in terms of assembling it. Now I'll show you how to download the uh, Raspbian image. This image already has the drivers already uh, pre-installed and everything, so it's a lot simpler to set up. So I recommend getting it from uh, the official website, uh, waveshare.com. I'll have links to everything I mentioned in the description so you don't have to uh, remember everything. And uh, you want to download this from the Google Drive and uh, you essentially will just have to uh, extract it and then we're going to use Etcher to burn it. There are tons of uh, burning or flashing utilities available but the one I like to use is called Etcher and you can download that from Belina.io and it's available for multiple operating systems like Mac, Windows and Linux and make sure you download the correct one for your operating system. So now that you've downloaded uh, Etcher we're going to select the right image and you want to flash this or burn this onto at least an 8 gigabyte uh, micro SD card. I'm using a 16 gigabyte one. And I think that should be enough in terms of holding like all the images and the actual operating system itself. Uh, 8 gigabytes should do, but 16 gigabytes is what I have. This process should take a few minutes depending on the, the speed of your computer as well as the write speeds of your micro SD card. After writing the image, we want to stick the micro SD card into the Raspberry Pi and then boot it up. And this process here, you can see that is going through the uh, boot up process. Uh, if you see a little lightning bolt on the top right hand corner, that usually tells you that your power supply is not supplying the right amount of uh, amps to the um, Raspberry Pi. And you may want something that's at least two, two amps, I believe. But uh, the one I'm using is just plugged up to my computer right now, so um, it's going to have that lightning bolt. Once you boot up to the uh, desktop, you'll get some error about SSH having the default password, which is fine because we're just using it to display some images, so uh, security shouldn't be a big issue. 
Uh, so what we want to do now is set up the Wi-Fi and we can do this just from the actual desktop right here. You want to click on those double X's right here and you want to select your Wi-Fi and here it is. I'm going to click that and enter in my uh, passcode and now what we want to do is figure out what the IP is. And If you hover the uh, cursor over the top of it, you should be able to see what the IP is. Make note of that because we're going to use that to SSH into it as well as uh, use uh, SFTP to transfer some images. And this is the terminal where you input commands. However, we're going to use SSH, so we're not going to use the terminal on the Raspberry Pi. Instead, we're going to remote in with uh, SSH. I'm on a Mac, so I'm going to use the terminal and we're going to plug in the IP here. Um, you can use PuTTY if you're on Windows. The default password should be Raspberry if you haven't changed it. And from here, what we're going to do is install an image viewer, and it's called FE or F-E-H, and that's what we're going to use to cycle through the various images. And to do that, what you want to do is plug in this command, which is sudo apt-get install F-E-H, and then hit enter. And this process should be really quick. So uh, click yes to uh, confirm if it asks you. Next, we want to install unclutter, so type sudo app get install unclutter, and this removes the cursor from showing up uh, when the, uh, the image viewer is uh, active, and this is just for a cosmetic reason. Uh, you don't really have to install this. And finally, we want to install X screensaver, and what this does, it allows you to disable the screensaver so it doesn't blank it while the... Uh, the image viewer is running because after I think five or six minutes the screen will go blank and we want to be able to disable that and by installing X screensaver we have the option in the uh, desktop to do that and I'll show you after this gets installed. So after installing X screensaver we can now disable the screensaver. Uh, we go to the Raspberry Pi and then choose screensaver from the preferences and there should be a prompt about how it's not running so click OK and from here you want to select the mode and go disable screensaver so once we're done we're gonna go back to the command line at uh, via SSH and punch in a few more commands now what we should do is clear the screen so that it's not so busy here um, we're gonna create some uh, folders to hold the images so I'm gonna create one called cards um, you can see that it's not there right now, so MKDIR, cards, and then we're going to go into the folder and we're going to create some more folders, so for the various types of cards that you may have. So for example, I'll make one for Pokemon, I'll make one for uh, Magic, I'll make one for um, Hearthstone, and I will also make one for baseball, hockey, and football. You can create as many folders as you want uh, for your various uh, card images. I'm just uh, giving you some examples. Uh, if you just want to display Pokemon cards, you can just create one folder. Or if you want to just display your favorites, you can just put them all in one single folder. Now we're going to create a script to run the uh, Fey image viewer. Uh, this is so it's easier to launch it so you don't have to type it all out every single time. Go to your home folder and type sudo nano slash home slash pi slash pokemon dash display dot sh and this will uh, run the nano editor and allow you to uh, basically it's a uh, text editor and it'll allow you to input some commands. So I'm just going to paste it here and paste this command quickly and then hit enter. Once you're in the editor um, I'm going to paste this in here because it's going to take a long time to type it out, but I will leave uh, the uh, the command in the description. So you want to uh, copy that and then paste it in here. It's essentially what it's doing is it's telling uh, uh, Faye to um, load the image viewer to and then scan the folder that we created and display it on display 0, 00. And uh, you want it to preload, randomize, full screen. We want it to scale down big images. We want it to do a bunch of other things like uh, reload and rescan the folder every 60 seconds. And you want to change the image every 60 seconds. So that's essentially what this command does. And you want to hit Control O for writing, and then you want to hit Control X to exit. And now what we have to do is make sure that this batch script or bash script is uh, 
uh, executable. And to do that, we use the change change mode command. Uh, so type sudo change mode plus x, and then the name of the script we just created, which is pokemon-display.sh, and this will make it uh, executable. And the very next thing we want to do is to make it auto uh, auto start this script every time we reboot. So to do that, we want to edit the um, the auto start script. So I'll paste another command here. And again, I'll leave that in the description just so that it's easier for you to cut and paste. And uh, it's pretty much the same thing. We're going to use nano. And this script is actually inside the config. And from here, you want to type out this command, which is essentially to load up the script we just created. So you want to add this to the very end of this script, uh, at home pi pokemon dash display dot sh. You now should save it, control O and then control X. So now let's go back into the cards folder and go into one of the folders that we created before. As you can see, there are no images. We will have to download them. And the easiest way would be to Google images or uh, I would show you the website that I usually use to get the card images. Um, they're pretty high quality and it's perfect for our uses in this case. PKMN cards.com is uh, where you can usually find some good quality images and what I typically will do is just type the name of like my favorite Pokemon and then I hit enter and from here I can usually right click and save as um, to download the image um, you can do this on Google images uh, wherever you want um, there's a lot of resources to get these images but uh, this is one of the websites that I use to transfer the images that I just downloaded over I use FileZilla and I will create a new um, new uh, entry. So I'm just going to call it card display. And we're going to use SFTP and put in the IP of the Raspberry Pi, which is 216, port 22. And we're going to put the login, which is Pi. And the password is Raspberry. And you want to type that in and then hit connect. And that should allow you to connect to your Raspberry Pi. And uh, from there we can, um, so that's the password, Raspberry. And then um, we can start uploading the images. Um, so just click connect here. And it, sh it may take a few tries to connect. I don't know why that is, but um, if it doesn't work the first time, usually the second or third time it should work. And you wanna add this into your trusted sites. Go okay. And this is the Raspberry Pi. And if you scroll down, you should see the cards folder, which we created in the command line uh, in the previous steps. So uh, if I scroll down here a little bit, uh, you should see it. Uh, there it is. So we're going to double click on that. And those are the folders that we created. So I'm just going to go into the Pokemon folder. And these are the cards that I downloaded. I'm just going to drag and drop all of them into here. And I will start uploading them. And uh, it's pretty quick. Um, each image takes a few seconds to upload, as you can see. So uh, these images aren't that big. They're about 200 uh, kilobytes or so. So they, they will get transferred really quick. After we're done transferring the images, we'll uh, SSH back into the Raspberry Pi. And this is where you, if you do an LS or listing, you will see the images that were just uploaded. So these are all the cards that we uploaded via um, SFTP using FileZilla. And next thing we're going to do is run the uh, script to test it out to make sure everything is working. So if you hit, uh, if you type uh, period forward slash Pokemon display, and then you move over to the uh, Raspberry Pi, you'll see that it will start to display the cards we just downloaded. And you can see that the image is actually not rotated yet because it's um, we have it in a landscape format. Ultimately, what we want to do is have it in a portrait mode like this, more like a trading card. Of course, so we have to rotate the display. And thankfully, um, WaveShare does have a utility that uh, will rotate the image for you. And I'll show you how you do that in the next step. So back to the computer and SSH, we're going to hit control C to stop the uh, slideshow. Now we're going to go into uh, LCD show. And this is what will allow you to rotate the um, display 90 degrees. Type LCD show 90 and the Raspberry Pi should reboot 
and when it does you'll notice that the screen will be uh, orientated the right way so here it is it's uh, starting to reboot so it's sideways right now but once it reboots it will go um, flip 90 degrees so it will be in a portrait format now you'll see that it's in the right orientation now uh, it is cut off a bit because you know in a portrait format you're losing um, some of the uh, horizontal width so uh, that's not a big deal because we're just using it to display card images so not a big deal so we're waiting here as it's booting up into the desktop you're gonna have to wait a few more seconds before the uh, auto start script kicks in but once it does it'll take over the full screen and you won't see of any of these uh, the desktop or these error messages and uh, the SSH message is because we're using the default password which is insecure but like I mentioned before since we're using this as a slideshow display thing it doesn't really matter uh, because this is a touch screen, if you just tap on the screen here, it will cycle through the images, so it'll skip, skip quicker. Because uh, by default, I think I set at 60 seconds, it will change the image. And um, by tapping on it, you're making it change a lot quicker. So it's cycling through the Pokemon cards that I uploaded previously. And you can see that it's actually pretty clear, right? The, the text is sharp. You may be seeing some hash marks, but that's because of my camera that's recording it. Um, when you're looking at it in real life, it, you don't see some of those hash marks. So for the final finishing touch, I 3D printed this bezel so it mimics like a PSA kind of graded card. Uh, I used some translucent uh, uh, PETG uh, filament to give it that translucent look. And then used my color laser printer to print the uh, label and stuck it on the bezel. So it looks more legit. Um, you don't have to do this process. Um, it's just purely for cosmetics. I think even with the bare LCD screen and Raspberry Pi, it looks pretty cool already. But uh, I think the bezel just kind of makes everything fit together, especially when I have other PSA graded cards on my desk and shelf. So here's the stand that I use for the display. It's uh, for Game Boy Advance, but it works well with this uh, device. Uh, I didn't design it, so I will leave uh, links to it in the description and the credit goes to the original designer. So this digital card display is great for showing off your favorite Pokemon cards. If you have limited desk space, this will take up way less room. You're not limited to displaying just Pokemon cards, of course. Uh, you can display Magic the Gathering cards or Hearthstone, like the ones I've shown you before. Uh, baseball, hockey, Yu-Gi-Oh, basically any trading card. Uh, hopefully this gives you some ideas in terms of decorating your desk with a, an active display that cycles through your favorite cards. Um, you can use the method I've shown you before or you can just buy a picture frame. You know, it's a lot simpler that way or use an old tablet or a, or a smartphone. Um, but this is just another method using what I have, which is a Raspberry Pi and a, an LCD screen that I had kicking around. Um, I'll leave links to everything in the description so if you want to uh, pick one up or uh, pick up the parts or you want to know what commands I typed and I'll leave all those links in the description it'll just be easier than uh, telling you about them anyways that's it for this video I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next time